to the four people who are going to speak to us today from uh, Wuxi Biologics, uh, starting with Brendan McGrath. He's the Ireland site head and VP manufacturing at Wuxi Biologics. More than 25 years of industrial and pharmaceutical manufacturing experience. He's led the branch in Ireland and it will shortly be the largest single use facility in the world. Um, and will supply biologics products to the United States and other global destinations. Then alongside him is Mary Moran, the Manufacturing Director of Wuxi Biologics in Dundalk. And Mary has 25 years experience within the pharmaceutical industry with a special interest in the area of change management and leadership development. Then there's Porik McPhillips, the drug substance head Wuxi vaccines in the manufacturing facility in Dundalk. Before joining Wuxi, Mr. McPhillips had senior positions in manufacturing and technical operations for MSD and Wyeth. Then Mr. Delian Kai is Wuxi vaccine site head in Dundalk. He's over 20 years experience in well-known multinational companies in the use of management and manufacturing. Between them, I would say almost a century of very strong experience. Very happy that they are indeed the sponsors today and all four of them will speak. So without further ado, let me start off and say, <clears throat> Brendan, I think you're going to be speaking first this morning. It's a pleasure to have you all here. So I'll hand the virtual floor over to you. Uh, hello again, Ruth. Thank you very much for that intro. So. Uh, Good morning, everybody, and it's great to uh, be able to get a chance to talk to you today. So uh, as Ruth has mentioned and introduced us, you can see the uh, people that are going to speak today uh, in front of you. Uh, I'll start and then I'll hand over over the course of the uh, the next uh, while just to the, uh, the, the other team members and they will take you through their, their slides. So I uh, just wanted to give you an overview of Wuxi Biologics. Um, and uh, the agenda for today is to take you through that from a corporate point of view, just to look at some of our and technology platforms, global platform, and um, who our global partners are, what our demographic is here in Dundalk. And then we're going to go through the, um, the Wuxi vaccines um, entity. And then also, and uh, we have some very specific details uh, on the biologics and the vaccines manufacturing capability later on. So from a corporate point of view, um, you know, our, vi our, our vision is uh, as a corporation that, you know, every drug can be made and every disease can be treated. And we can do that by building an open access platform uh, with the most comprehensive capabilities and technologies in the global biologics industry. What our mission is, is to accelerate and transform the discovery, the development and the manufacturing of biologics through a comprehensive open access platform, enabling our global healthcare partners and benefiting patients worldwide. And I think this has been very evident in the race to uh, secure a, a, a treatment for COVID and Wuxi Biologics was very much involved in that. And, has really challenged uh, the traditional uh, timelines that have been associated with uh, drug discovery, uh, but then also the uh, uh, bringing of those drugs to uh, the uh, public so that they can treat those diseases. Our business model is that we want to win the molecule um, and uh, also follow the molecule. So that's where we are slightly different from other CMOs in that we're a CDMO. So that D is very important to us because that uh, signifies the discovery element of what we do. And we were the first biologics company in China to be certified to US FDA, EMA and Anvisa. Um, and uh, we have a, a very robust and, and uh, first rate quality uh, global supply uh, chain network. And, uh, you know, we're based and I'll take you through our, our global footprint later. From a revenue perspective, we're number one in China um, in our sector. Um, we have about 135 uh, projects underway. Um, by 2024, we'll have 430,000 uh, litres of capacity uh, from a biologics perspective. Uh, our company is only 10 years old, yet we're going to hit uh, nearly 10,000 people um, by the end of this year. Uh, so very significant growth over the last 10 years. Uh, we've about 450 um, global partners and our <coughs> market capitalization is about $400 um, million dollars in Hong Kong um, and we're listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So when we talk about uh, you know, our, our company, we started out in, in 2011. We were the first company, our first biologics company in China to be certified by the US FDA, EMA and, and Visa. Um, and we were the first non-government affiliated biosafety testing facility in Asia. Um, you can see the logos of those regulatory bodies here. Um, we're also, the uh, from a, a, an industry leading perspective, we are the first GMP facility to use 
the largest uh, disposable uh, bioreactor that's available in the market at the moment, which is a 4,000 litre capacity uh, single use bioreactor. And we were also the first uh, GMP fill facility in China to use ro robotic aseptic filling lines uh, for our biologics uh, products. So very much at the uh, cutting edge of technology, uh, very much uh, leading the way. And, uh, you know, we are uh, in the top three of uh, uh, the companies within our sector. From uh, follow the molecule strategy, um, you know, if you look at uh, the, this uh, inverted triangle on the right hand side, you can see, you know, a lot of inputs in relation to potential uh, opportunities for drugs. Uh, where they go through the different phases from discovery right through to preclinical phase one, phase two, phase three. And the reason I'm showing this to you today is that, you know, we are very much involved in uh, that early discovery uh, work and not all drugs, as you can expect, make it to commercialization. And um, so you, you need multiples of, of, of opportunities. And, and that's what this funnel represents where, you know, we're working on multiple programs, multiple molecules with the potential then of bringing them to that may not have a treatment today or may uh, not have an adequate treatment today. We've had 135 programs in way, uh, underway at the moment and uh, with one of the largest portfolio of complex proteins consisting of uh, monoclonal antibodies, bispecific antibody drug conjugates and fusion proteins. And uh, we have seen a uh, huge demand for our services um, with the um, uh, onset of uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, and, uh, you know, we see that those services, you know, are, are, are showing best in class results in identifying and reducing um, the lead time to market from discovery uh, of those molecules. And we actually have a very uh, large growing uh, business in relation to vaccines, which will be talked about later. From a, a network perspective, you know, our, our company started in China and uh, we're actually based in uh, Wuxi City uh, in China. And you can see on the right hand side, we have multiple uh, sites uh, and locations in China. In 2018, we announced uh, that we were going to uh, open a facility in Dundalk in Ireland. Um, and that has a capacity of about 54,000 litres. Uh, since then, we've also uh, acquired two facilities in Germany, uh, one for drug substance and one for clinical. And then we also are developing uh, facilities in, uh, in, the, in the US. So you can see uh, a company that's only 10 years old, we've expanded and have a very large um, multinational uh, um, intercontinental uh, exposure. And you can see on the bottom left then the forecast in relation to the capacity. So you can see when we started um, in 2011 through to 2012, we had very small capacity in relation to uh, what was available. By the end of 2024, we're talking about over 430,000 liter uh, capacity with our single um, use bioreactors. This is just a, an example of some of the um, global partners that we have. Um, so we have about over 450. Some of these are household names to many of you on the call today, and then some uh, maybe not so much. And uh, you know, we don't actually manufacture uh, our own products. What we do is we partner with our uh, partners to identify molecules and to bring them through uh, the different stages uh, right up to commercialization. We have uh, seen a, a huge increase in the number of uh, colleagues in our company. And you can see on the graph on the right hand side, you know, by the end of this year, uh, we're anticipating to get to uh, close to 10,000 employees from a very small base uh, back in 2011. And that's why we're here today, because we have located uh, two facilities in Ireland and we're looking to attract uh, you know, talent and, and colleagues uh, to come and join us on this journey uh, and to uh, you know, develop uh, the, the sites and the facilities that we have uh, to supply the uh, rest of the world. Um, we have uh, one of the largest uh, biologics teams uh, worldwide, um, and uh, we have over 500 employees holding PhDs or equivalent. Um, and uh, we have a very high uh, retention rate in, in relation to the talent that uh, we've attracted to the company. This is a photograph of the facility in Dundalk. Uh, we finished construction in, 20, uh, in September of this year. Uh, we started construction in February of, 20, uh, or of 2019. Uh, so in about two and a half years, um, despite the challenges of Brexit and COVID, uh, we built uh, and finished a facility of over 47,000 square meters. 
and uh, our, our plan now is to uh, move into this facility uh, in quarter one of this year. We're in the or in quarter one of next year. We're in the middle of commissioning qualification and validation work, and uh, plan to be uh, ready for commercial operations uh, later on in 2022. So you can see a state of the art facility uh, on the outskirts of Dundalk uh, in County Loud. From a, a demographic perspective, and I apologise, this is from uh, the summer, but just to give you some uh, high level statistics, 58% um, male, 42% female, 85% of our uh, colleagues are, uh, are, are of Irish nationality uh, and about 15% are other nationalities and they represent 11 different nationalities. So very much a, a, a very uh, diversified and international organisation that we're building here in Dundalk. On the right hand side, you can see the, the levels of qualifications of those teams, and then you can see the age profiles and you can see, um, you know, uh, what we have about 67% of our team are, are under the age of 40. So quite a young dynamic team and uh, that we're building in, in, in uh, County Loud. From a leadership point of view, about 41% female, 59% male, and uh, approximately 70% of our hires are coming from the local community. Uh, so that is giving great opportunities for people to live and to work in the same area and not have to face the, the long commutes uh, that uh, face people unfortunately at this time. From a manufacturing point of view you can see uh, this timeline just represents construction completing in September uh, and then we're getting into uh, the uh, qualification of our two, uh, two facilities so we actually have two manufacturing suites within the, the, the one manufacturing building, MFG6 and MFG7. And you can see as we uh, get into 2022, we're starting into water batches and then into engineering and PPQ. So um, very much uh, coming to the business end now and uh, turning over the facility and getting ready for uh, commercial manufacturing. And with that, then I'm going to hand over to uh, my colleague, Deliang, who's going to take you through the um, vaccines presentation. Thank you, Brenda. So, so next slide. Brenda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, vaccine, Wuxi vaccine is a subsidiary of Wuxi Biologica. So we are focused on a human vaccine discovery, development, and manufacture. So Wuxi vaccine will bring to the global vaccine industry the world class integrated platform and the CDMO model, business model on which Wuxi vaccine. Biological reputation is based on. So definitely, we will meet and try to exceed the cloud expectations for a reliable supply of a vaccine with the right quantity, right quality, right timing, and the right cost. Next slide, Brenda. Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, it's the Wuxi vaccine's vision is we are aimed to build the best integrated open platform for vaccine technology and uh, enable global vaccine development and manufacture. So our business model is based on a technical strength and the premium quality span, CNC and the regular affair capabilities technical platform, including micro platform and a viral platform, as well as commercial facility. This enable us to provide a true end-to-end -end service to our clients, from vaccine discovery, development, through scale up, to commercial manufacture and the distribution to global customers. Next slide. Currently, uh, we have uh, eight projects that cover different uh, modalities. First the category is prophylactic vaccine, which cover a uh, technology like MRA, adenovirus, a tenure viral vaccine vectors, and a VLP, vi viral life uh, particle vaccine and also recombinant protein ATG. A second big category is a cell rapid vaccine like HSV or kinetic virus 
and recommended protein and both two valent and four valent. Next slide. So we already had engaged, proactively engage and contribute to global supply of COVID-19 vaccines. We supplied COVID-19 vaccine, drug substance and drug products to a global top 10 farmer since last year. We already start another global vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine production for global supply. So the totally so far, we already produced and supplied exceed 30 million doses of COVID-19 to the global the market. Of course, we have other the two project in the discussion and about to, of for the MRA COVID-19 supply. And we also, we have other project in the negotiation, the phase with the potential clients for the HPV vaccine and other vaccines. Next slide. So this is a bird view of Dendok vaccine site looks like. In the middle, you can see is manufacturer facility, which and it has the two production suite. One is the drug substance. This will be viral cell-based use carrier the technology to produce the, the full quadrivalent, the monovalent drug bulk. The second production suite is drug product, which will use the formulate technology that pull all the four different monovalent together and uh, use deep freeze dry or lie or technology to freeze the product. Then we'll use uh, automated, uh, automated uh, visual inspection technology to have a vision, make sure each single vial is purely with any other the unexpected uh, particles. Then we are distributed to the clients for the final uh, labeling, packaging. So on the left hand, you can see there is okay, the potency lab, which was designed and built and, uh, in the last year. Since the last July, it has been put into operations to receive potency methods, development, pack transfer, and Clyde's clinical phase three test and a release. On the right hand, you can see there is a excellent in the, the canteen for the staff. So this is the dedicated facility because we are already signed 20 year contract for one of global, the bigger global top four vaccine player for one of innovative the vaccine, which are still in the clinical phase three development. So that's why we are engaged the earlier through the method of path potency development and the validation to support phase three clinical sample release and for future and tech, receive tech transfer to commercial manufacture this innovative vaccine for global market. Next slide. So this is just the overall look at uh, overall, you know, project uh, the roadmap. You can see our concept design was completed uh, almost, uh, let's say that uh, two years ago. Then now we are in the product pro, process equipment and uh, piping installations. So early next year, so we can finish the, the installation, then we can start 
the commissioning and the qualifications. So by end of next year, the facility will be ready. That means we have finished all the you know, EMPQO, then we can restart the process, the PQO. Then we can start the receive the technology transfer. So now you can see by the 2025, we will have a first image, which the product will uh, fill in the two R vial, have a PPQ completed. Then we will have a support of the clients for the first image to R, the product registrations. So the products are going to be launched on 2026. Next slide. So this is a looks, you know, the, product, the, the, the facility, as you can see, this is just the opposite of Brandon Biological's facility. It's dedicated for the vaccines. So our mission for this, uh, this uh, vaccine, Ireland, the team, we are trying, we are aim to build a proud team, focus on exceed class expectation with world class, reliable vaccine manufacturer performance, because we are CDMO service provider. Next slide. So I think I hand over to the Mary. Thank you. I'll unmute myself, that'll be handy. Thank you very much, Deliang. I'm just going to share my screen uh, here so that I can, sorry, am I sharing my screen? I'm not, share my screen and there we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back into presentation mode. So thank you, Daddy Yang, for that. Um, I'll just reintroduce myself, um, remind everyone, uh, I'm the manufacturing director um, here at Wuxi Biologics Dundalk and really, really happy to talk to you today and share some thoughts on the whole topic of innovate and inspire at Wuxi Biologics and Wuxi Vaccines. So myself and Porig McPhillips uh, from Vaccines are going to run through a few ideas, share some ideas as to what we um, have, I suppose, just in general, what's going on in the industry, as well as to share some thoughts and, and uh, ideas as to what's going on on site uh, here in, uh, within Wuxi generally and on site here in, in, um, in Dundalk. So, okay, just to get started, I suppose, just to, to reflect on what drives innovation and, and what are the kind of key factors that push us as an industry into innovative um, technologies. Um, I think Brendan and Deliang have already emphasized that as a CDMO uh, within the industry, Wuxi Biologics plays a key, and vaccines play key parts in driving uh, innovation and providing as many um, offerings and services to our customers as we possibly can. So I suppose some of those core um, innovation drivers that are driving our industry at the moment would be the whole idea of increased competition. Um, all of our all pharmaceutical companies are trying to bring as many options and medicines to patients as possible. So there's a lot of players in the market at the moment, a lot of activity in the biologics area. Um, the whole area of complex medicine certainly drives innovation, the growth, significant growth of orphan drugs. So these are drugs where you have a very small po patient population. So it means that it forces companies to do smaller, um, smaller runs of the drug, and that creates its own manufacturing challenges. And then, of course, there's the whole area of personalized medicines, which is very exciting these days and driving the industry into um, cell and gene therapies, etc. And that personalized approach to, to medicines, and really finding, finding those solutions for patients. So there's a lot of key movements and, and directions that are driving technology and in, in innovations. Um, I'm just going to touch on a couple of um, industry trends. There's a lot, a lot going on, but I've just kind of co covered um, five here. I'm going to do a little bit of deep dive on two of the items, so single-use systems and digital transformation. But I suppose it's important to reflect on a few others. Um, certainly across our industry, we're seeing you know, increasing tighter strengths as a key, um, a key development. 
Um, this has been on the go since um, the whole Cho, Cho cell line has been uh, adopted as a standard across the industry. Tighter strengths have been increasing as well as downstream uh, manufacturing improvements as well. And we're getting up to, we're getting processes through with um, uh, concentrations up to seven, eight, nine, ten 10 grams per litre, which causes it. It's a, it's a great problem to have to handle, but there, there are issues that we have to find solutions for within the industry. Um, single use systems, I'll touch on that in a bit more detail on the next few slides, but single use systems, you've already heard from Brett. Um, Brendan, um, it's certainly a key platform that we use um, and take advantage of within uh, Wuxi Biologics, and we're a very much a, a, we use it as one of our platform technologies. So we'll, I'll give a little bit more detail in a few minutes. Continuous manufacturing, a lot of progress um, being made in this area, and definitely an area where there'll be future um, future drive. So we've got perfusion processes, which again we we offer to our customers here on site in Dundalk and across our networks. Um, continuous um, chromatography. Uh, um, uh, concentrated fed batches, a lot of different continuous um, options um, being driven by the industry at the moment. Process analytical technology, another key area um, that the regulators in particular are very, very um, interested in. Um, uh, encouraging companies to use those tools to really understand our processes in more detail and understand how we can ensure that they're as compliant as possible, as consistent as possible, which improves quality for patients and also improves um, cost um, drivers and manufacturing efficiencies across the industry. Um, Finally, an awful lot of talk all the time about Industry 4.0, that digital transformation and making sure that we're using and leveraging all of the data that we have at our fingertips from all of the different systems, control systems and, and um, uh, all of that area. So I'm going to do a little bit of a to that. And a comment is sharing some of the, the key platforms that we use within Wuxi Biologics and, and how we drive innovation across um, across the industry by uh, sharing and encouraging uh, uh, sharing offerings with our clients, customers and partnerships that we have across academia and, and the industry in general. And finally, I'm going to finish up just with a kind of a, a short short um, uh, review of, you know, our people obviously are a key, our key asset within as they are with every business. Um, so we're very proud that we're able to offer a lot of very, very interesting opportunities for people um, within our sites uh, here in Ireland. And that's why we're here today to, sh to share that with you and hopefully uh, encourage people to join our, our uh, dynamic, energetic and expanding team. Right, so I'll just move on to the next uh, slide, which touches on the single use systems. So single use systems, um, in gigantic use across the industry at the moment and expanding all the time. Picture there on the left hand side just gives a, a, a picture of the, the, the more traditional stainless steel bioreactor setup. And then on the right hand side, the single use system bioreactors. Within Wuxia Biologics, we use bioreactors, uh, disposable bioreactors across the board, and up to, as Brendan mentioned, 4,000 litre uh, single use bioreactors and really driving um, this area of the industry. Um, you can see the, the slide there. I don't know if you can see the detail here, but this industry trend area. It just basically summarizes that single use systems are being used across all aspects of upstream and downstream manufacturing. So, and they're being used in greater and greater percentages. Um, they give a lot of flexibility. Um, they give a lot of advantages for, for the industry and very much in broad use across um, upstream and downstream manufacturing. Some of the key advantages, um, some of the, the, the more obvious ones and less obvious ones. Um, so for what the disposables and fixed single use systems offer um, to uh, industry are increased flexibility. OK, so that's one of the key key drivers. It, it uh, speeds up time frames in terms of getting uh, clinical materials generated and speed to market. Um, it, it does give um, some energy and environmental advantages, reduce carbon dioxide footprint, lower water, water and energy consumption. And then, of course, when you're actually setting up your facility in the first place, there are lower equipment costs involved and you can drive a project to uh, more, you know, faster completion. There isn't as much, you know, pipe work and network of, of stainless steel vessels that require, um, that it will take longer to install that, that type of equipment. OK, so there's some of the key advantages. But I suppose it would be foolish not to reflect on, you know, there are some, as there are with all, all um, uh, options, there are some uh, challenges as well with single use systems. So there's a lot of significant advantages, but some of the, the 
um, challenges that we would face. And they're very uh, clear at the moment with the high demand for single use systems as the COVID demand has been ramping up um, the whole area of supplier um, uh, supplier management, uh, the whole idea of, you know, that you're, you can be too reliant on, on single use suppliers and you have to make sure that your supply chain is managed effectively, which you don't have that issue if you're working with stainless steel systems. Um, you have the whole leachables and extractables assessments that need to be done for any of these single use systems. Um, the industry has solutions for all of these, but it's important when a company is making a decision as to whether or not it is advantageous to use single use systems or remain with the more traditional approach. There's a lot of considerations and factors to take into account. Okay, um, I'm just going to, I suppose, divert into Wuxi Biologics just for a second to give you a sense of like one of our key uh, strategies that you may or may not be aware of would be the scale out. So scale out instead of scale up. So the traditional approach within the industry um, and tech transfer and as a product is developing through, you know, the early stages of clinical development through phase one, two, three, and then into commercial manufacture, you start at small scale and you start and you continue to scale up. There are risks associated with that, of course. Um, you have to verify at each scale that uh, the process is performing as it was before. And, you know, as we know within biologics, that's particularly sensitive, you know, the, the, the product is, 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 is the process basically. Um, so you can see there like the traditional process would be you start off with the stainless steel reactors and scale up, up as far as perhaps 10 to 25,000 litre capacity, depending on the volume of the product that you need to manufacture. Within Wuxi Biologics, our, our strategy is to scale out instead of scale up. So we will start at small scale initially, um, but we'll get up to a sort of a platform technology, either 2000 liters, 1000, 2000, 4000 liter um, scale. And then what we'll do is, is, is fix on that scale and then manufacture at that scale um, in multiple vessels. So for example, in Dundalk, we, in our fed batch facility, we have 12, 4,000 litre uh, vessels so that we can accommodate customers that require access to three of those vessels or all 12 of the vessels, uh, depending on the volume of their product. And it means that you can avoid, you, you ensure that you've got greater consistency, you're running the same process at the scale that you have significant advantage as you've been scaling, as you've been developing through clinical and commercial manufacture. So the advantage of this as well is as the lifetime of this, 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 um, this graph shows you the lifetime of a product, it can be unpredictable for pharmaceutical companies, products that you expect to be blockbusters potentially aren't, others that you don't expect to be a blockbuster can suddenly require significant volumes to be manufactured, and that means that you, know, you have to have that flexibility. This, this approach and strategy gives you that flexibility um, and, and can be of great use to um, our, our customers. We find it, it's, it's um, a particularly interesting uh, strategy and it is, it, it is one that is being uh, taken up by a lot of our customers and clients. Okay, so that's um, the area of single use systems. So definitely um, an area of, of significant development and there'll be further significant developments into the future. The second area I wanted to touch on was um, the whole area of automation and biotechnology and the digital transformation. So as we know, the, the bio biotechnology industry relies a lot on compliant and efficient technology. And a number of the drivers um, to, um, that, are, that you know, encourage or push the industry into using as much automation is that it gives us you know, consistency, reliability, and repeatability. It gives us, um, it really supports quality of product. It, it gives us our regulators that confidence that we have the processes well under control. Um, it's better, um, helps us, um, gives us a wealth of information if we're dealing with process failures. Um, it, it gives us additional human and material safety factors, certainly. And I suppose I just wanted to share with you, I suppose our, our, um, we have multiple um, uh, control systems within, the in, within our, our plants that uh, gather that information, control and manage the, the process that we have. Some of them are listed before uh, below here. We've got our building management system, our EMS systems. Um, so that's BMS, EMS, um, process automation systems, our PAS. Uh, we've got SCADA systems and PLCs, which are the controls um, for our manufacturing equipment. And all of these systems are very rich in data. And we have data historians which collect all of this information and transform it into, um, you know, into different graphical representations. It can be very detailed, it can be high level, and and we can we can access um, that information at, at different stages of processing. Um, 
just in terms of, I suppose, how we can use just to drill into a little bit more, it's like really important to reflect on the fact that, you know, our, this digital transformation is underway and companies are trying to drive and use the information and data that they can get. We have a very data rich industry and sometimes we don't make as much use as we should of the data. So a significant amount of data is generated during manufacturing of products and a key initiative in our industry is to transform that data into actionable insights so that we make use of the data and we're making really um, improving the compliance, the efficiency, reducing the cost and, and enabling us to bring products to mar market faster. So it increases you know, plant efficiencies and agility um, when we use predictive technologies. So very briefly, just to talk you through, we've got we've got a raw data, and from that we'll import it into analysis algorithm models to generate a digital footprint. Okay, that footprint then we'll do it for one batch. We'll gather the information for multiple batches, and then from that we'll have a digital footprint for our systems. We can then, once we've got that in place, we can analyze and, and set up various different um, uh, controls and uh, alerts and alarms if, if we're not within control. And once we've got that in place, we can then set up real-time monitoring, which enables our, 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 our automated systems to give us signals when we're not completely in control. It really ensures that we can maintain uh, efficient, uh, efficient processes. We can predict when things are going wrong. We can analyze trends and we can avoid problems in the future. It gives us a wealth of data if there are any issues or deviations. Um, so it's just, it's a very powerful um, platform and it's it's certainly the industry is driving to use more and more of this um, this approach. Um, and we're certainly using it within Wuxi, Wuxi Biologics and Wuxi Vaccines. Okay, so that's just a, a couple of comments, a couple of thoughts on, on the, the whole area of digital transformation. Just want to reflect now just over a couple of slides on uh, the, the area of driving innovation. So Wuxi Biologics and Vaccines, we're, we're a very proud um, company in that we are only in, in uh, existence for 10 years, as Brendan mentioned at the start. Um, and, and I suppose a key part of what has made us so successful is generating innovative tech technologies and for, for, uh, for our customers and clients. So this slide summarizes a number of the different um, um, technologies and platforms that are available. So, so just running through some of them, we've got bi-specific antibody platforms. We have a high titer production Cho cell line development platform. Um, we have perfusion cell culture platforms. Uh, we have various different analysis platforms as well that we offer to our clients. Um, we have uh, purification and formulation development platforms, and even in the area of ADCs, significant number of offerings and platforms available to customers. So the way we work, you, if you remember, Brendan showed you that, that um, hopper of all the different products and customers coming through. We can offer solutions and options to customers at various different stages um, of their manufacture, be it trying to um, uh, bring a, a very new product or just an idea to market, to supporting in clinical development or supporting a clin uh, commercial manufacturer. So we're able to support customers at various different stages and our innovative technology platforms really support that um, those activities. What I want to reflect on now is just, I suppose, this again is how we have been enabled, we've been able to enable organizations to develop, um, discover, develop and manufacture biologics. So I suppose just across this, um, this slide just gives you kind of an idea of within China, Chinese pharma, um, we've certainly been enabling multiple biopharmaceutical companies in China to advance their, their technologies and, um, uh, and and you know, upgrade and make sure that we're trying to uh, we're supporting others in in making sure making the best use of technology available. We have significant number of startup companies that we support across the globe, um, and that again is about making sure that their their ideas, their products are coming to market as quickly as possible with use leveraging our our platforms. We partner closely with academia, and here we've got a couple of examples of, of uh, a number of universities that we partner with in China, um, but we're partnering um, across across um, uh, both in Europe and the, in the US as well, just to ensure that we're trying to stay in touch and, and support uh, academia as well as partnering with them to bring new technologies to market. In the area of COVID-19, Brendan mentioned this at the start that you know COVID-19 has really seen an explosion in the amount of activity and support that we've been able to give to, to the industry. So we've been um, very proud to be involved in, in many making many clinical contributions to, to try in terms of fighting and supporting the fight against the pandemic.
And then finally, we partner with currently with 14 of the top 20 biopharmaceutical, the large, large players in the market, um, and then partner with them to ensure that we, we support them in bringing their medicines to their customers. Okay, so just very strong uh, kind of innovation, support of innovation across the industry and, and very much our, our um, modus operandi. Okay, finally, and most importantly, just want to touch on, on people, the whole area of, you know, inspiring the innovation. It's, it's our teams, our people. And, and here in Dundalk, in the biologics facility in Dundalk, we have a wealth of experiences that we can offer to people. We're in startup at the moment. So that gives its own headaches, but it's also a, a, a gigantic learning opportunity for everybody involved, myself included. Everybody learns everything new every day. Um, so just in terms of like what, what we have on offer in the site, so it's Greenfield Startup and all the, all the good things that come from that. Um, we are using cutting technology in terms of automation. So very much um, involved in that digital transformation, those digital transformation efforts I was talking about earlier. We are a CDMO um, and we interact with multiple customers can be very interesting. You see different approaches, um, you see different products coming through. So you get wide exposure to lots of different um, products and different technologies. Um, as I've mentioned, we are strong proponents and use actively across the whole site single use technology. Uh, we have fed batch suite and perfusion suite um, and we'll be um, exploring and implementing continuous manufacturing options in the future as well. CQV equipment qualification, very much a key part of what we're doing at the moment um, and a wealth of, of learning there as well. So gigantic opportunities for people to get involved, great learning opportunities. Um, and ultimately, we will be a multi-product and flexible facility um, and all that that entails. So just to, I suppose, briefly, we are, we are uh, speaking today to encourage people to join our organization. We do have a number of open roles across the whole organization, but specifically in the manufacturing technology area, um, we have openings as bioprocess associates, um, openings for shift leads, uh, manufacturing technology scientists and engineers and and of course in the area of msat we have a number of openings uh, for scientist roles so we'll be very very keen to expand and get additional people to join our teams okay and finally just want to touch on a very a very much so so proud is that you were proud very much kind of encompasses our culture within Wuxi Biologics and Wuxi Vaccines. And just specifically at Wuxi Biologics Ireland, we're very proud to celebrate what, it, what unites us, which is our passion to create unique and life-changing experiences. So that's it. Um, thanks for listening. And I'll hand over to my colleague, um, Porik now. Thanks, Mary. I'll just, oh, I can't share my screen. Why is that? I need to stop sharing, perhaps. Yeah, you need to stop sharing. Thank you. There now, I've stopped. Should be able to share my screen now. Am I sharing, guys? Not yet, no. Okay. What's happening here? Am I sharing now? Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 There you go. Good. So hi, uh, my my name is uh, is is Parik McPhillips, and I work with Deli Yang in in the uh, Wuxi vaccines in, in in Dundalk. So so, what I thought I'd start off with uh, today is so vaccines have become a, a uh, the last two years that we wouldn't have heard um, people talking about vaccines and what vaccine they got in a, in, a, in a coffee shop, but now now we do. They're an everyday. Uh, conversation piece, and uh, so I thought I'd start as a, as a vaccine person. I'd start by just looking back at at, at the history of vaccines, because even though we're all talking about them now, the vaccines have made a significant contribution to public health uh, over over the uh, centuries. Basically, starting off, I guess, with with, with uh, the smallpox and uh, vaccine way back in the in in, in the eighteen hundreds. So, so a very very important part of public health, and some would say. Uh, second only to clean water as far as contribution to, to public health. So it's 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 a great area to work in. It's a great area to be in, in, involved in. And uh, you know, as as Daddy Yang showed, the modalities that the, the company are working in right now covers a lot of these classifications that that I've shown here on the screen. So uh, that's first my my, uh, my my plug for vaccines. And then as Daddy Yang talked about the facility. Um, I will move into to the facility a little bit and and what uh, what we have at um, Dundalk in in our vaccine suite, right? 
And I guess the, the first thing that's, um, I wouldn't say unique, but, but not common is that we have uh, the full life cycle pretty much in one facility, uh, in one fairly compact facility in, in the Dundalk site. Uh, so we have the uh, drug substance where we make our actives. Uh, in, in drug substance, we, we follow that through to our formulation area. And as Daddy Yang said, we, we bring our serotypes together there in a, in a, in a, control, a very controlled manner. Uh, and then we proceed into our aseptic fill area, and then we preserve the product through lyophilization, right? Uh, so, so it's a, the full uh, complement of, um, of a unit operations that are required pretty much a, across uh, any biologics um, um, product or vaccine. So uh, what experience do you need to, to work in a facility like this, I guess, is, is one of the things. So you experienced people on board already would have experience in, in, in cell culture, in the single use technologies, in, in the downstream processing, which is the purification, filtration, uh, in, in formulations we spoke to, and then moving into sometimes very different skills in the aseptic area. So the aseptic area is all about being able to fill our product in a very safe manner and so that it's a sterile product when it reaches the patient. Very, very important in all drugs, uh, very, very important in, in vaccines as, as you know, you're treating patients that don't have the disease uh, to stop them getting the disease. So you definitely don't want to uh, cause any discomfort or danger to a patient when you're, when you're, when you're giving them a vaccine. So those, those, some of those resources we have on board at the moment, but uh, these are the areas which you really, really can grow on and experience across uh, this one compact site in, in, in Dundalk. So it's a, it's a super opportunity for people to come on board uh, to, to learn all these different unit operations. And that will really, really set you up for a excellent career, I think, in, in both vaccines and, and biologics. So I'll just move on to the next slide and 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 and, and sum up a little bit. Uh, so what's what's the unique opportunity for for in in Dundalk vaccines and in Wushi vaccines, right? Uh, so again, drug substance true to finished drug product, uh, all under one roof, really good. Uh, Deliang referred to it full QC, and if you kept building raw material through potency lab to finished products in 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 the one site as well. Uh, Mary referred to a lot of the, the uh, single use technology and again in vaccines, a lot of single use technology and also with biosafety capability um, installed as well. So uh, when you're making viruses, you got to make sure that the product is safe, but you also got to make sure that the people working with that product are, are safe as well and that the environment in which you're working is, is safe. Uh, and then you learn about the CDMOs and, and the different models which are we work with, uh, the development models, the manufacturing models, and the different types of clients we work with, uh, from the large client, which is a, a large client we currently have for Dundalk vaccines, uh, to, to much smaller clients. Uh, and then to be part of this young and growing vaccine CDMO um, is, is really important, and the vaccines that our clients are producing are, 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 are super products to be, in, be involved with. So what are we looking for in at the moment in, in Dundalk vaccines? I would think uh, production associates are really top, for, top of our want list, uh, senior production assistants with experience uh, and production assistants with um, lesser experience, right? But to have the aptitude uh, and the um, ambition to work in, in this type of industry. So I'd just like to finish off with just an image of, of our facility as, as it's been built right now, uh, externally and internally. Uh, and I'd like to thank the organizers and the contributors and participants uh, of today's uh, webinar uh, for giving us the time to uh, talk about Wushi. And I hope it was informative for you guys. And thank you.